Blue Earth thing here, and thank you for joining me again as we're going to take on Paul on the plane as he attempts to take down the Himawari 8 satellite and prove that it is fake. Hey guys, Paul on the plane back here with you. Welcome to episode 2 of Faking Space, now in our second season. Today we're going to focus on the Himawari geostationary satellite, which we're told is something like a mind-boggling 22,000 miles away from the Earth, sending us a real picture every 10 minutes. Did you know the Himawari um, ironically means sunflower? So, yeah, there's proof of the heliocentric sun worshippers model right there. I love how Paul here doesn't even bother figuring out why it's called the sunflower. He just assumes that it's some part of a sun worshipping cult or something like that. Well, in Japanese culture, sunflowers are a very popular flower, and they often mean hope and recovery, sometimes even respect. So why are we picking on the Himawari today? Well, defenders of the heliocentric model love to point to the quote-unquote almost real-time images from the Himawari as proof of a globular Earth, since it allegedly gives us a picture every 10 minutes, and the weather uh, data seems to be, you know, pretty current. Well, unfortunately for the ballers, we're going to debunk that completely here, simply in the next five minutes, and show you how they fake it all. Yeah, sure. Let's cut right to the smoking gun to start. Here uh, is the website anyone can go to and see this all for themselves. On a side note, the Himawari is operated by the Japanese Meteorological Space Agency and brought to us by the NOAA, the National Oceanic. I love how quickly he just brushes over the fact that the Himawari 8 satellite is not operated by the NOAA, but instead the JMA. Goes geostationary satellite server. And I'll include the links here for all this stuff in the video description so you can check it out right now if you want. Okay, so when you're at the FTP site, click here for the site description. So when you do, a text file comes up and you can see right here they tell you that all of the images in the archive use the underlying colored land images from the NASA Blue Marble data set. The Blue Marble data set is actually a collection of data taken from multiple polar orbiting satellites around the globe. If you're arguing for a flat Earth, this is a bad point to argue. They take the Blue Marble data, uh, data set, which I'm sure you remember, they admitted years ago was a flat strip data pieced together uh, by an artist named Rob Simon in Photoshop, because it had to be. <laughs> I covered this whole subject, I think, pretty thoroughly in a video called Imaging Earth that I have. Um, I suggest go watching that after this video. It pretty much debunks what he just said. Now, don't take my word for it, as I always say. Go check it out for yourself. Number one, they have already created and stored transparent images of the weather over the oceans using climate simulation software. This simulation software that you're talking about is not as accurate as you would like to think. You know, when you're checking the forecast for a month and it ends up being absolutely nothing like it said, yeah, that simulation software making that forecast prediction, and guess what? It's not a very accurate thing, and it sure as hell cannot predict the cloud cover of an area at a certain time. Which they openly admit right here, that they've done climate simulations up to the year 2095. But it's actually the year 2100 on this FTP server folder, and here's one of the images. And following some of the other images uh, that you can find where the land masses are transparent, and they use all this simulation software to come up with the weather over the oceans. How? Absolutely how? If you notice something, there's no clouds in any of that prediction. You can go to the website yourself, look at all the images, you never see clouds. In fact, they actually go year by year, because you don't understand what they even are. What those images are is temperature. That is temperature predictions for the future, not cloud cover, not weather. You know, since our weather data comes from our ground-based Doppler radar, and it's impossible to use ground-based systems to cover the entire vast oceans. Yet these images that you are trying to debunk have perfect accuracy on where the cloud cover is currently. Thank you for proving the globe Earth. So that's where the weather over the oceans comes from, their software simulations. Number two, now for the weather over the land, the NOAA has supercomputers that take data coming in from all over the world, Doppler radar feeds, and crunch it all together and combine it with the weather simulation data over the oceans, so they come up with a complete composite <laughs> uh, weather quote-unquote map. The Doppler radar does not show clouds. In fact, it only really shows rain and pressure changes, but it does not show cloud cover. There are times when you can go out when you have a fairly cloudy day, and if you go check your Doppler radar, 
there is no green or red spots on it in your area. Which is then wrapped around a ball in their 3D modeling software programs, just like we've shown countless times in our previous episodes with the Earth and the planets, etc. So, then what we get are composite images like this that are created in the 3D modeling software. The current Doppler weather uh, data over land and the simulated weather over the oceans, and it looks like this. So, so we're taking Doppler radar, which does not actually see cloud cover, mixing it with global predictions for temperature changes and weather simulations that are not entirely even accurate, and they also do not measure cloud cover and put it together and we get global cloud cover. Brilliant! This particular image is on the FTP server and is date and time stamped with October 11th, 2017 at 11.05 a.m. I just chose one randomly. Notice the image shows you the weather for the whole ball and not just part of the ball that is lit by the sun at this particular time. This is because it is using light that is not visible to our eyes no terminator line or anything like that right okay now here's the kicker go to the other file folder which is the images that we get to see and are told are real pictures from space but what they've simply done is taken the weather map picture of the whole ball they created and they superimpose it over the blue marble data set just like they said they did so what you can see here is the final version of what we're spoon fed and told is a picture taken by the himawari from space like you know 10 minutes ago this is the image from the same date and time, October 11th, 2017 at 11.05 a.m. And you can see that the weather is exactly the same. What you just did was take an image from the Himawari 8 satellite, compared it to another image from the Himawari 8 satellite, and said, look, they look exactly the same. Well, of course they would. They're both from the exact same satellite. Now, also notice, the uh, final image has a Terminator line added in to try to make it look like a real picture from space, which drives a nail in the coffin of the Himomari because the weather data shows it over the whole ball completely. Gathering that weather data is only possible from space. So, even having that data proves that there is space and proves that the Earth is in fact a globe. Congratulations, you have just proved the globe Earth. Well, that's it for me, guys. Thank you for watching, and thank you to Paul on the plane for coming up with a way to prove that the Earth is a globe while still claiming the Earth is flat. I'll see you guys next time. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Blue Earth Thing.